you know, known for your emotional honesty and uh, intensity in your music. But for you, what is the core of? I would, I would say the essence of Black Foxes is what you said. It's raw honesty. And it's always what it has been. When I, when I started Foxes maybe 12 years ago, um, I told myself it would be the last major project that I was ever going to do. You know, so whether it was a success or not was irrelevant. Like that would be like, every, I would put everything into Foxes. And um, yeah, when I sort of decided that, it, it made sense that only the honest stuff stuck. You know, no time for gimmicks. Um, so yeah, I think that is the essence. That's how it was formed and it's still like that now. Um, we're a lot more playful now. Um, we're very different as a band than we were 12 years ago, but the essence of it is exactly the same. Yeah, talking about the honesty, it has been moving to hear how you, um, you know, uh, battle like panic attacks and how uh -huh. you can uh, kind of find a sanctuary in music. So mm -hmm. could you elaborate a bit on the process of how you can, you know, change these uh, panic attacks or frustrations into music? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really suffer so much anymore with mental health in terms of panic attacks. That was definitely um, the, the majority of the first, rec first and second record was sort of that phase of my life where I really, really struggled massively with anxiety. Um, it wasn't even, uh, I don't even find music as a channel for my mental health. It's just music is my soul. Music is everything to me. I didn't enjoy making music when I was having panic attacks, you know, but um, I persevered and, and got through it. it it's, uh, it's weird, like a lot of people expect it's a cathartic experience uh, to make music when you're going through mental health, but for me it wasn't, it was torture, hated it. I, I hated those years where I was having panic attacks and making music. And you can hear it in the record, like I'm not well. The record was horrible to make. I was really unwell. Um, so yeah, I find making music now a lot more cathartic because I'm in a really good place and I can actually just let myself go. So yeah, it's, it's interesting that, um, that question. Yeah, like you said, the first two records maybe uh, kind of had you more dealing with uh, with the anxiety so how do you see the musical evolution because you know the fourth album the heart mm -hmm. is uh, coming out so how do you see the musical evolution from the first to the next one um it's very it's very different like the new record is is really different um it's it's hard to it's hard to like put your finger and give you a reason why music changes it's it's just growth but it's also about um being confident enough and having people around you that you trust enough to try things um which is where we're at now as a band like every night that we play and perform is different we're, we're trying completely new things and with my writing so much of my writing now is based on travel and culture and experiences so i try to travel as much as i can go to places i've never been before stay abroad as much as I can and it subconsciously just comes out in the music it just changes it's just part of growing up like I it blows my mind with bands when they keep making the same record I don't understand it um, for me I would have to force myself to make the same record as I'm not well it would be awful I would hate that experience like um, I'm not trying to make it uh, something different when with like the half for instance the fourth record I'm not trying to do anything different it's just naturally that's where I'm at as a writer now yeah let's talk a bit more about Tehar uh, you mentioned the traveling so for you what have been the like the main inspirations and maybe what are the main themes on the album uh, yeah I mean I, but I don't know if you've heard of um, there's a company called Workaway which is where you can you can meet people online uh, and you can work anywhere in the world. And I spent a year working on islands off of Scotland, on like national parks, Iceland in a Viking museum uh, for months in, in the mountains. Um, 
Italy in a cooking retreat in uh, vineyard country. Um, and for me, the record was all built around that year. It was all those experiences and not having time to just be uh, stressed by day-to-day issues, you know, like work issues and financial issues because I just, I I wasn't on my phone. I was just writing music. So yeah, that's what sort of made up the, uh, the majority of the ha in terms of uh, sound. And there's a lot of, uh, I sort of gravitate towards, um, I gravitate towards like the cold a lot. So Scandinavia for me is huge. Like I, Scandinavia in winter, I find myself, uh, I don't write a lot of music there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, talking a bit more about Tehar, uh, crowdfunding is nothing new. For me, it's uh, like sign of uh, like artistic freedom and yep. uh, like engaging the community, but it's uh, not so often discussed like how that uh, affects the process of making an album. Could yeah. you uh, talk a bit about that? It, it, sorry, say that last bit again. I got put off by uh, the song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's it's a, a great song. It's a banger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How uh, for you? How has uh, like that element uh, affected the making of the album? Well, the the record was already made. Mm. So when we did the, I mean, Kickstarter, Kickstarter campaign and crowdfunding is slightly different because yeah. crowdfunding is you're asking for money to make something then you go and make it kickstarter for us was we we had already made the thing so we made loads of different packages for people to be able to buy it but it is it was totally dipping our toes into a whole new world that we didn't know anything about um and it definitely didn't change anything with like the music but what it really changed for us doing um a crowdfunder or kickstarter was it made us realize that we can do everything ourselves. Uh, and it was... In- <laughs> wow. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and it was incredibly powerful for us as a band. That's why we're touring now. We're doing over a month in Europe. It's just the four of us. There's no one else involved. You know, it's, a, it's fucking hard work. But that campaign made us realize that we can do this and there's people out there that will support us. So we don't need a label. We don't need a major label, you know? So yeah, it was really powerful in that respect. Yeah. Uh, do you think in the future it will change something like the like engaging community like you that like you now have and you found it uh, successful? So, you know, do you think that will affect the future of the band too? Um... <laughs> Yeah, I do. I I mean, I feel like uh, I feel like Kickstarters and crowdfunding is a real tool for musicians. If you've got the fan base there, um, I don't know if we'd do it <clears throat> next time. And there's certainly things that we would do differently. Like the next time we do a Kickstarter, I want to have the record actually printed, like in our hands before we do it, because it's it, things can just take so long. Um, But yeah, I, it's been a breath of fresh air for us knowing that the the worst case scenario where if labels aren't interested or we just don't have that backing, we can just go direct to the source. We can go to our fans and make a record. It's it's DIY, it's punk, it's old school. So yeah, we really love that. <laughs> yeah, uh, as we said, um, today you had... Uh, quite some problems to get to play live here but yeah. uh, when talking about lives in general uh, they are always emotional so how do you prepare for your lives and what do you want people to take <laughs> away from a black foxes gig uh that's a really good question because i think it is so different now and my answer is so different to what it would be 10 years ago or five years ago um this tour that we're doing is really it's really relentless because it's us doing everything so it's massively long drives no sleep six shows back to back but the thing for us is we're having so much fun making music there is so much creative freedom there's huge jam sections where it's different every night i would say for me i i I genuinely want people to leave going i don't know any other bands that sound like that right now 
Um, and that, for me, is bringing Sam in as our fourth member, who plays saxophone and piano and sings, plays guitar, he plays everything. But on this tour, he's doing saxophone and piano. It's a whole new level with Sam now. And um, it's just enabled all of us to have this freedom. So, yeah, I would say I, I want people to leave and just go, I, don't, I can't compare that to anything. Whether, whether they lo love it or not, maybe some people would be like, it's too long-winded or too, uh, yeah, like slow or whatever. That's totally fine. But I, I want it to be individualistic. And yeah, I, I think every date so far, actually, to be honest, people have really connected with it in a way I've never experienced before. So I feel like we're building a really beautiful thing. Yeah, talking a bit about maybe Sam too. Uh, how much do you feel that uh, like very drastic uh, lineup changes after the second album? How much did they affect the band? They they didn't so much after the second record because the way that write, like writing songs works so often is the lineup totally changed after that second record. But the third rec the third record was made up of so many songs that were written with the old lineup. So when people hear the third record, it's different because there's new members playing, but it's often not until the fourth record or the fifth record where it's like you actually hear what the sound is, um, so, which is now like obviously you've seen t tonight's show, like it's very different to those early sounds. That's now where we're at with with the lineup change. Um, but yeah, I, I still look at that third album as a crossover. It's like um, the music is honestly sensational in the background right now. <laughs> Titanic. Yes. Um, I look at that third record as a bridging gap between old lineup and new lineup. And the fourth record, The Ha, is the new lineup, you know? Yeah, we've been talking about uh, difficult first two albums and then the lineup changes and as you said as you said the third album breaching it all so uh what do you consider like the biggest milestones for the band uh in terms of like what i want us to achieve uh, well maybe both personal and what what do you want to achieve maybe uh, even more for personal level like what have been like uh those uh like defining moments for you oh like from the past oh uh, and well, uh, and now, like, the most important moments for you? Um, I think the, the most important... There's honestly so many with, the, with this new record, so many, genuinely. Um, because we've done this all ourselves, we have had to... I mean, some of the things we've we've had to go through to be able to get things done have been crazy, but our attitude as a band now is just like, we will do it and figure it out. Um, and I love that about us. That's, you know, the reason why we managed to play tonight is just like, we will do it. It will happen. Um, I would say arranging a full-scale record, just, just the three of us at the time, uh, splitting up between Spain an island off Scotland in winter where the boats weren't sailing because of rough seas, managing to make that record, um, managing to set ourselves up so it looks like we're going to have a release this year, a release next year, and a release the year after as a band is really great. But also playing these shows and knowing that all this work that we've put in behind the scenes, um, it is building towards something and there's people... Um, that are really fucking connecting with our new sound. And when this stuff comes out, it's, you know, it really feels like it's going to happen. So yeah, those are the proudest moments, I guess, in terms of like milestones for me, big ones would be Glastonbury festival, Jules Holland. Um, those are two like classics. And then just being able to financially live off this to the point where we can just create and not have to worry about, having other jobs to financially sort ourselves out. So that would be milestones, I would say. Yeah. I don't think we're far off that, by the way. Yeah. Um, uh, for personally, from the first two albums, <coughs> I could hear some, you know, grunge influences yep. maybe, but uh, from, for example, tonight's gig, that was a bit harder to find yep. there. So uh, um, uh, if you self reflect, uh, what influences you at the moment? Yeah, I mean, 
with the ha, I think you will still hear grunge. Definitely. It's just when making a set at the moment, we're having a lot more fun just doing more exper experimental stuff. It's not that I don't love grunge music. I still listen to the Pixies non-fucking-stop. Um, so I'm still huge on grunge. There's a lot of tracks on the new record that are definitely grungy. Um, but things that inspire me at the moment... Uh, I'm listening to a lot of Americana. Uh, I don't know if you know about Songs, Ho Songs Ohio. Listening to a lot of songs I hire. I think you'd really like it. I think everyone would like it. Everyone I've shown likes it, so I think you'd like it. Um, Neil Young always. Neil Young always. Um, yeah, those are the sorts of things I guess that are inspiring me. But when I'm writing music, I I tend I try purposely not to listen to too much because it can get in the way of your writing. So yeah. Yeah. Well. As we've been talking, I think it's obvious that Tehar uh, marks a new chapter yeah. for Black Foxes. So how do you see the future? Uh, I mean, most bands, you know, when an album comes out, the next one is already in the making. Mm -hmm. And like you said, like uh, Sam joining the band, like a lot of things have changed. So how do you see the future? Yeah, I mean, you're totally right. I'd, I'd say album five, I've written half of it. But I haven't taken the songs to the band yet. The way that I write is um, I'll write everything at home, like everything, and then I'll send it to the guys and it will totally change. And it's not until we get into the practice space and we evolve these songs that they become the songs. So I'd say, <clears throat> yeah, I'd say I've written, I've said written half the next, next record. <laughs> but um, I'm actually moving to Canada in August for two years. So my plan is to, my time in Canada, I want that to be freedom. And I'm just going to travel and what do work away is like work with people in the middle of nowhere and write music. And then my time then will be split between coming back for touring and stuff and festivals and recording. So that's where I see the future. I see us in the next year or two years becoming self-sufficient, sustainable as a band. Um, touring a lot. Uh, and yeah, I think the music's just going to get weirder and weirder, really. <laughs> that sounds good, but uh, in the end, I have to ask, because you mentioned that the coldness is something yeah. that inspires you and you are going to uh, Canada yeah. um, as a Finn, uh, yeah. like minus 20 is nothing, but uh, yeah. like, uh, what do you think? Uh, what do you think is that connection with you and coldness and how it inspires you and uh, can you explain it in any words? Honestly, you even asking that question, I'm getting goosebumps because I'm. It's really hard to um, to explain like my connection with with like Iceland is mainly, but Scandinavia and and the cold, and it's more than just I enjoy it. Like um, we started the tour really by doing Norway, Sweden. Um, uh, where else did we go? Norway, Sweden. I don't know, we did some other Scandinavian countries and I just feel like I'm at home. I really do. Um, I don't know, I've really been, I've been searching for this answer myself. I don't know whether I have some like crazy dis descendants that come from one of these countries. But it just seems like the, the problems that I have in my life, the stresses that I have day to day in England, evaporate when I'm in the cold and in Scandinavia or yeah I, man I don't know I'm searching for the answer myself I really am but I'm, I'm obsessed I'm genuinely obsessed yeah